<laughs> Crowded desk. Hey, move aside. Yeah. Get away from me. Hey. Okay. Don't touch my mustache. Okay, folks, welcome to the EV show. I'm Michael Bream, and this is my co host, Hutch. Eric Hutchison. He's intern's intern. Intern's intern. What we're going to do is we're going to be bringing to you on a monthly basis, basically kind of the latest news in the EV industry, some new products, some projects that we have going on here at EV West. And we brought Eric in because um, he's uh, basically what we'd call an EV amateur. Uh, he's just gotten into it. He's doing a conversion, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But he brings a really good perspective to this, kind of the perspective from... I don't know anything that perspective and we're going to help with that that's what we like to do here we want to bridge that gap between uh, the components and uh, the knowledge base and the only thing i've ever done to a car before is write a check to a mechanic as of 90 days ago yeah but in the last 90 days uh he's been real impressive he's done a lot of stuff well, it's, um, it's hazardous work I almost cut yeah. off my finger but it is fun <laughs> and it's tough not to jump ahead right now and just start talking about the uh secret i just project. want i want you to know that the intern's intern is if I make a mistake, it's not my fault. Yeah. Do we? Can we see the motors in the shot? I think we can. Over, just Do you really want to see these? We'll, we'll get to it later. So, the twins. This is the triplets. Like I said, the EV show. Um, we're going to go through. We're just going to kind of talk about what we're trying to do here. It's a once a month thing. Um, we're big fans of the Roadkill show. Uh, hey guys, and uh, they do it once a month, so we well, figure well, why not us? The show is. For anyone who wants to build an electric car, you don't have to wait for a car to come on the market that A, you don't want uh, because you don't like it, or right. you don't like the image, or right. you can't afford it. Right. This is the anyone in the middle can do a car show. Right. And that's how I ended up here because I was on your couch, and every time I bring up a car, you would buy it, and then it's sitting in the warehouse <laughs> not doing anything. So Let's see, I, had a long I got list a of car, those. <laughs> and I was joking. Yep. And he always bugged me about this, but you know, it goes all the way back to when you got married. Yep. And yep. Um, I jokingly said that I wanted Magnum PI's car. Yeah. And you said, how much are you going to spend on it? And I said, 12 grand. And you called me two days later and said, it's for sale at Copart in San Diego. And I was kidding when I said it. But now, as of Friday, yeah. three days later, I own a burned out, non-running fire Ari. So not only are we converting cars, we're actually converting people into EV conversion enthusiasts. Yes, it's a source of the... So, you know, if you have a Volt or a Leaf or a Tesla or something, this might not be the show for you because we're a little bit more in the, the bits and pieces and stuff, and we're definitely um, into uh, the conversion scene, basically. Perfect. Welcome to the uh, first filming of the uh, EV West channel on YouTube. Right, right. Welcome. So we're going to get started. Um, let's see, we're just going to start talking about some of the new projects and some of the new products in the store. I think we'll start with some of the new products because we've got a lot of stuff going on. That's our shop dog, Ono. Yeah, so we're, a few basic segments of the show are going to be reviewing technical things with what the EV West store, then we're going to look at EV West projects, and uh, the most exciting stuff, for me anyway, is the EV news section, which is going to get better and better. He just basically wants to talk about his car. No. But we'll get I'm to that. I want to talk about the new Harley <laughs> motorcycle <laughs> gang. Oh, yeah. I heard they rode through town. No one heard it. Hmm. <laughs> Imagine that. Just oh, my. We need a um, live studio audience, I think. We need some, some background. The intern can clap, but right. I can't ask my boss to do anything. Right, right. He's just off <laughs> camera over there. Hey, buddy. All right. Um, well, let's talk about, um, so you're doing, um, we'll get into the details of your car later on, but um, we've been working with ASCO, and, uh, who makes great flywheels over here, and we just wanted to show... Uh, Excuse me, I need an OSHA break here. <laughs> what are we doing over there? Where is the scale? Oh man, this is Where what Where is the scale? Yeah. Didn't you have, a, you have a scale We do have here. a scale. We do okay. have a scale. We'll, we'll have this weighed during the show, but as you can see, is, what are these things? The scale that you should be looking at is just how much this guy's struggling to lift this thing right now. I know and I'm fat now <laughs> in shape, but these things are the timing So that's, yeah, that's the exciter wheel. That's basically like a crank position sensor. Very exciting. Very, very, yeah, I feel yeah. the excitement. Just I'm already yawning. And, and this is the... Starter ring. Okay. Uh, yeah. 
That's our shop dog. He's complaining like about the weight of the wheel. He probably he sees, is. He knows he, when I'm in pain, and he's looking out for me. He thinks so his gonna, owner's going to have a cardiac. That is what we need to thing. put in a Ferrari. <laughs> that, this is what we want to put in an EV project. But from right. what I know, in EV projects like Jenny Craig, you got to go on a diet if you're the car. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So we've been working with the fine folks over at ASCO. They were great. They actually sponsored our original M3 project when we took it to Pikes Peak. And they helped us out with a custom flywheel for that. And uh, they did one for Hutch's project here, which we're using a Porsche G50 transaxle. And we wanted a, uh, a flywheel without the exciter ring, and we didn't want the starter ring on it because it takes a lot of weight out. I think we're somewhere around 9 pounds on this guy. 9.65, heaviest yeah. frisbee I've ever had. Right. So uh, we'd like to thank ASCO, and uh, you know, if we're gonna, uh, we want to announce that we're going to work with them. We have a line of VW and Porsche aluminum flywheels coming out that are specifically manufactured for electric cars. They don't have the starter ring. They don't have the exciter wheel. They're trimmed down a little bit more as light as we can get them because you don't need that uh, heavy flywheel anymore. That's one arm. That's one arm. Have you, have you been working out? No, just with that. Oh, I can tell. Yeah. Hey, ask him. Easy. And then Anaheim, <laughs> not far enough away. I should have driven up and picked this up in person. Right, right. So, Thank you yeah, guys we're gonna, very we're gonna, much. We're going to come visit you guys at ASCO. This is going to be half the reason why we're buying new tires after three days of making the car run. Right, right. So that's ASCO Flywheels. Thank you for that. Um, some other stuff that we have in the store. Uh, you want to talk about, so we have the Prius pedal here. And uh, yes. he's a little sensitive. He didn't want to put a Prius pedal in a, in a Ferrari, that right? Is, that is just the sound of it makes you grimace. Now we love this. Let's let's not um, is this really a let's Prius not pedal? be mistaken. Is this, this really that okay, really so, is a Prius so pedal? So it has it's a plug-in. There's no mechanics. It weighs about two ounces. You, yeah, know what? you can actually fix that. stuff in a cafeteria. You could just fling food with it. You That's know, awesome. Yeah, maybe I'm we'll good. do something with that. In another yeah. Episode. Okay, but is that really? Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna, yeah. we're going to talk about that later. So we love this pedal, by the way. We're not bagging on it Is by any means. Is that bark growing on it? But, uh, <laughs> 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 well, here, here's a little something. Pass okay, that over is here. That, is that, oh. I, got, I got a little something for you. This one has been uh, through the Toyota recall notice, and the way you can tell is the bottom here has been trimmed off uh, so that it doesn't catch the floor mat. I look and that is their floor mat fur in the back yeah, of that stuff. This is their official Toyota fix for that, so uh, it's kind of funny. Cutting the corners? Cutting corners. Oh, Toyota does that best, I think, I, oh. or GM. <laughs> so this is a, a firewall mounted pedal. You can tell by the geometry of it. Here's your firewall back here, and we have a mount kit for it and a plug and stuff like this to make it really easy. And we really uh, gear this towards the Volkswagen product because they all kind of have that front firewall there. You were scared um, me for a minute on the Ferrari. We don't have that in the Ferrari. We don't really have. Uh, a, a, a firewall to mount to. So we brought another pedal into our store, another repurposed pedal. We really like this. This is out of the uh, smart car, electric. It's, so it's actually, <laughs> it's probably going to go faster than it's ever been before in the Ferrari. But the nice thing about this is it's a floor mount um, and you can also mount it on a 45 here. And uh, it's a great little pedal. It's made in Germany, which is nice. All the smart stuff and Mercedes stuff is made in Germany. And so we really like it. I think it's going to be a reliable pedal. And uh, we just wanted to make note that um, we're going to use this in, um, in the Ferrari project. We did one in a 356 Speedster uh, last month, and it worked out really well. It's and, solid, uh, and it weighs about half a pound. Right. We got the matching plugs, the schematic everything ready to go Easy. and uh, so we'll probably do that maybe in a future episode go over the installation of that in the uh, Ferrari project step on it step on it all right <laughs> um, let's see let's finish up with some of your stuff let's let's talk about the Siemens adapter this has been a real hot topic lately a lot of guys have picked Not up the these build race party party mug to build build race party obligatory build, uh, race party product plug oh product plug sorry uh, what were we looking at we like build race party too so yeah, let's let's grab let's grab the Siemens adapter. A lot of guys picked up these uh, the Siemens motors with the uh, spline pattern on it. It's also the same sp uh, spline that we see on uh, several of the other motors. The oh, TM4 has the same it. spline pattern. It's bulletproof. Right. See. That's... <laughs> so this was a, gosh. This project took us. Um, three, four months at least to get it done. We uh, now, you had to do these. This you, West? You we, put this whole thing together. This is a universal blank. So a lot of you machinists out there can take this product and uh, mill your offset into it and your flywheel pattern and away you go. So we wanted to make this real easy. The toughest thing about this was nailing the EDM 
uh, with the spline pattern and getting that cut perfect. So this will not fit on a shaft unless you heat it up to about 300 plus degrees. And, and that's uh, steel. That's steel. It's, Did you notice uh, I'm using two hands to hold yeah. it? <laughs> you didn't get a workout. Uh, 1040 carbonized steel is what this is made from. And uh, we've used a couple of them now. Uh, Ed, our good friend, Ed Claussen. Hey, Ed. Um, he did one in his, uh, Excuse me. <laughs> in his BMW E21 project. And it was great. He really liked it. It worked really good for him. Uh, worked well for him. No lash. Lash is bad, right? So uh, no lash and, and he's away. So we have those available now. We have them in three inch, four inch, and five inch diameters. Uh, some of the bigger stuff, we're doing one in an RX-7 that's pretty big. It's almost a five inch diameter. Nice. Yeah, pretty massive. Okay, moving right along. Um, do we want to talk about the uh, 18650 cells? Since it's uh, kind of in the way over there. <laughs> so it's right. another repurposed product. Um, this is a uh, battery module. It's a three kilowatt hour module. 55 volt nominal, weighs about 42 pounds. Um, it is all 18650s, uh, manufactured by a very popular uh, electric car company. Um, just about the only ones messing with 18650s. It's got an integrated 100 Probably amp fuse. Probably not Toyota. Probably not Toyota. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Toyota, you guys are going down the wrong path. Now. Hydrogen? I, I don't know about that. I know right where to get hydrogen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be sure and, uh, you know, wave and say hello. How much power is this? You up. So this is, uh, it can put out about 175 amps max. So I can use this on my electric razor? Module. You could use this on your electric razor. For about two years? For uh, probably a little bit more than that. Yeah. Okay, because I have to buzz right. my head all the time. <laughs> so these are great. We've got a couple guys using these. Of course, our good friend Jehu Garcia is using them in the eSamba project right now. He's had really good luck with them. Uh, we had a customer build. Uh, a 2010 Audi uh, A4, and they used eight of these modules. You put two in series and you hit that nice magical 110 volt uh, nominal 126 charge to you that works great on the Curtis systems, the AC50, uh, the AC75, anything that runs a Curtis 1238 at 96 volts. Now, th now this is very compact. Very uh, it's, compact. It's, it's already pre-packaged. Yep. Uh, it's got liquid cooling. Yep, liquid cooling. On the battery. Yep, and heating for the guys in the uh, Cooler climates, you can pre-warm this. So we have a little 12 volt heater uh, that goes in line, uh, again, repurposed, manufactured in Germany, and it will warm up, uh, bringing your pack up to temperature for those cold mornings that we know absolutely nothing about here. What a great reuse yeah. for cars yeah. that yeah. is only available through EV West. Right, right. The mystery battery pack. The mystery battery pack. Um, the great thing about this is they are just um, an incredible deal. They're about 40% smaller, uh, about 40% lighter than the prismatic uh, chemistries, and uh, probably about 20% cheaper. Now, you wanted to put so, 18 of these in the Ferrari so we could get 200 miles of range. Right, right. But just because of the length. <laughs> they just won't fit. The little Mario Brothers with the helmets on didn't allow a spot in the car you for know, this. <laughs> There's barely enough spot for your feet. When you have a big ego, it's tough to fit a big battery pack in your car. Don't talk about the intern. That's my boss. <laughs> Hopefully he's out of earshot. So uh, we got some exciting things going on with these modules that we wanted to mention. Of course, the Volkswagen bus projects. Uh, we're working with a local customer um, on a 200-mile, uh, 54-kilowatt-hour Volkswagen bus, and that's a pretty exciting project because you know most of these things, these Versions. They're like a compromise, right? You're like, okay, I got my car. This car I've had my whole life, but now I can only go 80 miles. I mean, well, your Volkswagen right? Transporter has the middle bay underneath right. that you could the roughly put 12 to 15 of these in, if not 20, right? And drive that thing four or 500 miles. Oh yeah, we're gonna have a Tesla mileage more. double cap. Yeah. Gonna, we're gonna more. Yeah. We're gonna do the turtle, right? And the, the hair. Yeah, we're gonna have some high mileage conversions for sure. Uh, then this is a limited run battery, right? There are only uh, there's only so many 400 of those. projects yes. that you're getting these yeah. from, and each project has 10 of these. Yeah, uh, six. Six. So yeah. you're only going to have 2,400 models. 2,400 of these. Yeah. And the price you can get these at's insane. Insane. Compared to, you can't get them anywhere else at all. Right. Right. So that's priceless. And this is great. This is this is how you recycle stuff, Wait, right? There's there's no not, reason. There's so sense. much life left in these batteries. They just uh, they want to be put into a project. And that's not limited to car projects. No, off grid sto uh, solar storage. 
Uh, we've got a gentleman down uh, in the bay right now. He's doing a boat. You know, you have those little diesel motors that get you in and out of the slip on a sailboat. You only need to push these boats like three or four knots. Uh, and it's a great battery for it. It so runs you can put it. You a pack it, of these at your house and have a whole dedicated LED lighting loop right. with a solar panel that charges them when you should be at work all day. Right. And we have that for a future project where we're actually going to charge a car uh, running an inverter off of these packs charged with solar power. So, Sorry, I know we're yeah. talking about cars, but yeah. um, it's just yeah. uh, it's too electrifying. <laughs> There's <t> <laughs> the, the uh, you know, the possibilities are endless, right? I mean, they really are. You can do I, I so much get stuff excited with this. about it, and I'm not um, a car guy. One of, one of the most exciting things with this is we're working on a, um, you know, we're kind of known for our Volkswagen kit. Anybody, you know, can buy our turnkey kit. Yeah, we got a nice little electric sitting in the background now. Everyone, that's a very and, reasonable uh, deal. You know, Matt and I did one of these in a weekend once. We, we uh, busted it out in about two and a half days for the Discovery Channel, the Rods and Wheels episode. And we don't like doing it that quick, but it's a little testament, a little statement of how easy they are and how everything just kind of bolts right in. You don't have to cut anything or ruin the car. Um, I love Sawzall. But it's a little expensive. It's a nineteen thousand dollar kit for a Volkswagen, so it's a little on the pricey side. Well, but what's your maintenance going to be? Well, we know what that is. Brakes, AC motor, brakes, tires. I don't even think you need that. You, you turn up your regen. Wait, so okay, hook it gas? up to a brake transducer off your brake pedal, and you're really not using your brakes anymore. All right, so let's say you put a twenty-five thousand dollar kit in a Volkswagen that you have to keep stopping on the way down the highway to adjust the timing on the rotor cap. Speaking from experience, <laughs> in San Jose, that was right before I blew my motor going down the. Freeway. I think you might spend nineteen thousand dollars on uh, throttle cables and clutch cables and stuff in a Volkswagen. Yeah, so for That's your my whole guess. kit, your gas. Even if gas goes up or down in price, gas and maintenance is going to pay for it itself. You would think. In the life of the car. Yeah. Go. But we don't sell this on this. This isn't a return on me. the investment kind of thing. You're, we're well, just having fun, right? I it's mean, fast. Yeah. And it's fun. But most importantly, it's fast. Uh, very fast. Yeah, that's why we do this. Um, so we're working on a drop in kit with six of the modules. So it'll bring our uh, normal kit capacity. The Toyota modules? Uh, yeah. We'll beep that out. <laughs> The 18650 modules. <laughs> Did you catch that, editor? <laughs> um, so we're going to take our capacity from 22 kilowatt hours down to 18, and it will drop our price from about $19,000 down to $13,900. For a conversion kit for Volkswagen? For a complete, out the door, everything you need, convert it in a weekend. Yeah. On a Volkswagen Bug. If you yeah. own a Volkswagen Bug, 13 bucks. You can do that yourself. Thirteen. Even nine. I can do it. Even you can do it. I already see your wheels spinning. He's he's gonna be. You gotta be kidding me. He's I gonna be on Craigslist this afternoon or the Samba, right? I'm Getting gonna be on... looking for people needing a Volkswagen mechanic. <laughs> hey, by the way, I've got a permanent fix for you. Man, if you got an oval or a split window type one, send us an email. By the way, our show email is evshow at evwest.com. So uh, this is brand new. We we really don't have a clue what we're doing over here. We just said, hey, let's come in. It's a, um, a mellow day at the. Show. Shop. Uh, it's actually a holiday today, and we're just gonna uh, start filming a show. Products. And, and just we're gonna talk about products, obviously. That I know thing, everyone's is that staring a at this. Oh my gosh! Can you believe that? That should be a free addition to the Ferrari. I think we wrapped up the Volkswagen, right? So, so keep an eye out for that kit soon. It's gonna be a real saver. Again, thirteen nine, a complete EV West quality kit with all our little fancy uh, aesthetic stuff in the rear end there. Do you know what um, the best part about it is? Is if I took a Volkswagen here, and the right. same thing I did with uh, the Land Cruiser, right. take it to the my boys in Ensenada or in Mexico, right. they yeah. repainted, re-leathered, and re-carpeted my whole car for a grand yeah. and took out the two dents. Yeah. So, so long as your, uh, you know, your bearings and your hubs and your wheels are good, <laughs> right. that could be a brand new I mean, Volkswagen bug that you're yeah. going to get 25 years out of. Yeah. And it's going to be fast. You're going to go through a lot of tires. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Sorry. If you, no, this is great. If, you have, if you're in Southern California and you have a Volkswagen project, you want to talk to Eric about taking that south of the border. I think he's even got accommodations down there. Don't you have a lodge I know where or something? I all the tequila is. You do. Yeah, right. I know where tequila is. <laughs> so, um, all right. So let's move on to a little bit more product so we can get some of the stuff off the desk here. So uh, we wanted to show you this. You don't really see these too often, but this is the uh, Reinhardt PM150. Uh, inverter and this is what we're running on our AM racing motors um, we have a project we got a couple of these going out to a customer right now, now the inverter does uh, the magic it is the magic sauce this does give the power to the motor so it's different than a controller it's a controller it's a controller that inverts its current 
therefore it's an inverter. Like the Curtis controller? Like the Curtis controller. But that one looks like a, a Ferrari controller. Right, right. He doesn't want to give it up yet, but I'm putting up a fight. <laughs> we got some secret stuff going on in this car, <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to bring that to you soon. Um, I, I guess that's the hook, right? Follow the show, kind of figure out what we're up to. And we'll take emails and answer questions. Eventually, we might become technical and be able to do it online while we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, that's a good idea. We could huh. potentially go yeah. live one day. Sure. Email us your questions, uh, Internet land. We'll have to get the beep button, though, so we can beep ourselves out. Yeah, that's what we need. Or a gong. <laughs> I prefer uh, the gong, right? Yes. So that's it. We just wanted to show this to you because we really love the guys up at Reinhardt. Uh, they make an absolutely amazing project uh, what's the product. They're, they're, for that? What, what's the perfect application? Uh, high horsepower. High right. horsepower. You right. see these, and like uh, the guys over in Australia, the El Mofo guys are racing with this controller with the Radical like SR8. Racing. This is like your uh, 900 horsepower uh, beamer right. that you raced right. up Pikes Peak. Yeah. This is actually going in a, a different application, but um, uh, we have a, a customer that needs to spin a shaft at over 400 horsepower, and uh, we're going to do dual Reinhardt 150 controllers with the dual AM racing motor. You know, a lot setup. of people, even mechanics, a guy called me from Mexico City today, right? and uh, we were talking, and we, we just sold him some parts from a car that, uh, that I'm working on, and he says, you know what? I don't want to, I want to work electric. He's all, you know, what's the kit for a 32, is it the, the Forder? A Fodor. A Fodor. Fodor. He wants to do a 32 yeah. Fodor. I, I thought it was just yeah. a mistranslation. And yeah, I, right? I had to look it up. Oh, my. See my how Spanish much I translator is broken. Oh, my. It's not a, a Spanish version, a Mexican version of a Ford. How do you say Sh Ford in Spanish? <laughs> Volkswagen. Caballero? Caballero. Hey, that's not funny. It's like but, the F-150. What do they call that? The but his question is this. He's all, what's the kit and cost for? And I said, right. what's your budget and how much horsepower and torque do you want? Because the limit the, of there is power... No there nice. isn't any, no. and your car proves it. No. And yeah. I, I think that the concept from me knowing nothing about electric cars and what is very important is that you can literally do as the little as you want to have a perfect driving car at a basic level that's double the performance of average and more reliable to pretty much dropping socks and shoes and, and, and scaring yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like to scare myself, but... I think that's just, me. those are unintended consequences, right? It's just the fun of that drive. Well, I think it's a good time right now. We're going um, to go out to our uh, reporter in the field, uh, Jehu Garcia. He's going to have a quick tip for us. He's going to um, contribute to the show every month, and he's going to basically uh, show, you know, I think this month he's going to talk about contactors and some things going on with contactors to help make your conversion a lot easier. I love just the tip of the yeah. day. Yeah, let's go ahead and take a look. Hey guys, welcome to the first quick tip out here in the field. Today we're going to be talking about contactors. Uh, if you don't know what a contactor is, it looks like this and we use them in our electric vehicles. A contactor is basically a relay or think about it as a big switch that can be controlled remotely using a smaller electrical signal. Uh, typically these are used to connect your battery to your other systems like the controller or the charger. On my AC50 system that I got from HP EVS, that's what it, this one does, connects the battery to the controller. Um, this one, it happens to be a Tyco Kilowatt uh, LEV 2085NAA relay. Uh, this is the, typically what ships with uh, the AC50 systems uh, kit. When I run my system, eventually failed and what happens is it welded close uh, and what happens is that this has a, an electromagnetic winding that you activate through these smaller cables. It shoves a copper plate up and connects these two posts together and that's what completes the system. So if you fail to pre-charge your capacitor banks, uh, then every time you close this, it typically would make a large spark inside, uh, eventually welding your contactor closed. Um, that was not the case with me because the um, Curtis controller uh, automatically does handles pre-charge for me. So I don't have to deal with that. So when it failed, what I thought the problem was, was that I had failed to maybe tighten the two nuts that connect the cables onto here tight enough. And then that created extra heat and that made it fail. So that was my theory of why the first contactor failed. So then I replaced it with this one right here, 
which is an exact model of the one that came originally in the system. But eventually, uh, as I went uh, on a long trip and I was going up hills and down hills and stuff, pulling large amounts of amperage through there, this one also failed. And as you can see here, this one has signs also of stress, heat stress. There's a little bit of melting stuff here. There's discoloration here. Uh, even the case is broken and stuff. And when I went to check this one to see what was the deal and why it had also failed, I noticed that the connections, the two nuts that, the, to make, that make the connections here were actually pretty tight. So it wasn't through my fault this second time, but this also failed. So what leads me to believe that maybe is that this contactor is not a good match for the AC50 system. So I order this Gigavac. Uh, GV200MA. This one, even though it's smaller in size, it can handle more amperage. And so I set out to install this one on my Samba to replace it and to see if it, it will eliminate the problems. Well, it didn't quite work because this one has an economizer circuit inside and so my system requires a contactor that doesn't have that circuit that is directly connected uh, as the Curtis controller uh, handles the economizing circuit also. So this one doesn't work if you're gonna uh, plan to replace uh, a gig a Tyco with a gigabyte make sure you get the one without the economizer. Uh, th those do exist and it's a different part number. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna try to uh, install this smaller Tyco uh, contactor and as you can see it's a little bit smaller so it handles less current and the reason why I'm going to try to do that is because these are going to be available uh, in large numbers due to the fact that these come in those packs that I'm testing out on my Samba. We got to find ways to use these ones and so I'm going to experiment and see if I could use two of these in parallel to replace this one and I'm going to show you right now how to connect those. These are 12 volt and the one that I'm replacing is 24 volts. So it will require you to connect this one in series on the, on the drive side, on the low voltage side, but on parallel on the high voltage side. So let's go and see how I'm gonna do that. Okay, this is a plate that goes on my Samba and this is a plate that I'm gonna use to install the two uh, contactors. I already pre-drilled this, so we're just gonna install them using some 832 threaded screws. Yep. Okay, so here is the, the driving circuits for these two contactors. And so, like I say, we, I had to make a special cable that connects the two contactors in series. And that's so that you can actually use the 24 volt system or signal coming from the, con from the controller and divide it between the two 12 volt contactors. So I just use regular RC car uh, battery connectors here for quick connect and disconnect. And so here's what the circuit looks like. So I'm gonna connect this out there on the car and I'm gonna install this uh, and then the uh, connector to the line that comes from the uh, controller. Now these are gonna be the two uh, bars that are gonna carry the current from one side to the other. So now we need to make a couple of holes. It's called a unibit. And it's uh, used to make holes on metal. Works pretty good. Oh, look at that, perfect. So now we have to mark the other side. Okay, I got it. Perfect. Perfect. I can use this thing to mark the other one. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Let's do the other one. Wow, 
Wow. Let me see my gloves for this. All right, look at that. All right, so I'm gonna now make those two plates look a little bit prettier by taking the sharp corners off, which is gonna cut them here. All right. Table here. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, you're gonna try to minimize the amount of exposed uh, surfaces that could potentially be hazardous uh, or shock hazardous, right? To uh, short. Um, what we're doing here is just using uh, standard. Uh, shrink tubing and this is you know you use it to wrap stuff around uh, cables and ends and stuff so that's what we're wrapping it here with uh, just regular half inch or this is three quarter inch uh, shrink tubing um, and that way it'll look nice also so the way you do that is you heat it up Make sure you hold it with some pliers, because it's gonna get hot. Ready to go. All right. Let's go install this guy in the sound. All right, guys, this has been a quick tip on how to use uh, two small contactors to do the job of one big one. Now we go back to the studio. So there was Jay Hoos. Thanks, little, Jay. Yeah, Jay Hoos. Awesome. Hughes. Awesome, man. Uh, love you, buddy. Um, you know what I'm thinking? What are you thinking? Triplets. Triplets. He's having one baby. I just triplets. had three. Yeah, he just I had, had three. Yeah. Didn't even take. Uh, and I didn't even have to explain it to my wife. Yeah. Because I don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, um, before we get into the triplets, oh. I, I, this guy, oh. look, at, look at him. God. Look at this. Can you see this? Chomping at hey, the bit. Just, 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 that, you know, that, let me just adjust it a little bit so I, can, so it's, I don't feel them looking at me. <laughs> uh oh. Don't let them roll. So like while that. this chaos is going on behind look me. At, I'm gonna pull the Reinhardt over. Look at that. We got something that? really exciting we want to talk to you guys about today. Oh, sorry, I can't. can't control myself. I know. Myself. I know. So we absolutely love the guys over at Siemens. Uh, they actually come by the shop quite regularly now. That's a better looking coffee neat. holder than the Asco, so I'm just gonna borrow that if you right. mind, okay? Yeah, you know, coffee and high voltage. Just these are really <laughs> making me feel special. So. You know, we're always looking for these ways. We, we use the OEM market as kind of like some guidance on the feature set that's important to the customers. They spend millions of dollars on research, and we do R&D, rob and duplicate, and then we got their research. And one of the, the things that you really need to do with an electric car is, uh, you know, down here in San Diego County, we kind of have expensive electricity rates. We pay about 45, 50 cents a kilowatt hour uh, during peak and about 16 cents or so off peak. And so we really want to uh, encourage people to charge off peak. It's better for the grid. It's better for everyone. And uh, what are you doing here? You know, just writing okay, notes. he's writing me notes, right? It says smile more. Try not it's to look so. Spinach try not to look so ugly. Is that spinach in your teeth, bro? <laughs> oh man, it's breakfast. Yeah. Oh, it looks good. So. The guys at Siemens really listen to this, and, and they make this uh, EVSC. This is their brand new second generation unit. Ooh. Wow. Look, even Ono's. So, 
Uh, this is a great thing. We're going to go into this in, in greater detail later on. We're going to have a little uh, quick tip video on it. I've never pulled one but, of these out uh, before. Yeah, you got to press the release button there. Oh, that's Look at that. That's how newbie is, right? So That's my first time I've ever um, done that. <laughs> but not this. I'm glad we could do this on camera for you. Uh, the Siemens has a great delay timer, two, four, six, eight hours. Uh, it's a delay. You come home at 6 p.m., plug your car in, hit the timer three times, six hour delay. It turns on at midnight and you take advantage of those off peak rates. Now, this sounds like a minor feature, but when you look at it, when you consider peak rates are about 45 cents a kilowatt hour and off peaks about 15, it's about a three to one ratio. So with this feature, you can literally save you know, 66% on your charging bill for your electric car. Now, can, so, you, can you wire this to your neighbor's house without them knowing? You know, uh, that is definitely something we need to take <laughs> up in a future episode. And uh, seeing as we're neighbors in real life, I think uh, uh, when you go out of town, I'm going to bring the little trencher over and some underground conduit and and we'll, we'll, we'll do a proof of concept. I already have right? guys tunneling. We'll Don't see worry. if you notice your meter spinning away in the middle of the night as we're charging all oh, our electric cars. Oh, I have a tunnel right into your refrigerator. You yeah, don't even right. know it. So uh, we're going to go into this. We, we're going to do one of our little uh, product demonstrations on this a little later on. But we wanted to show people this. Is that this. outdoor rated for uh, This a is. It, so is. Nema, it, it is NEMA 4. You can okay. put it out. Uh, another little feature that it has that none of the other charge stations have is that it has a remote on and off. So you can actually run a switch inside your house. Say this is out in the yard or something. You can turn it off or turn it on. Now, who's uh, got one of these to. that you can control with an app on your iPhone yet? We're waiting for it. Bring We're it. waiting for bring That's it. Winning. Bring it. That would be the magic sauce. You know, uh, my wife and I we drive the Bolt, obviously, okay. and uh, we love the app. Believe it or not, we uh, I hate to say something nice about GM, but uh, the OnStar app is, is pretty nice. It tells you your state of charge and I heard something in one of our development projects about an iPhone app that controls the entire car. Yeah. I think it only works on Ferraris, but we're working on that. We got something cooking with his car and the iPhone because, I mean, who doesn't have an iPhone these days, right? Yeah. Are you on Android? And I update my software, too. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the Siemens, the Gen 2, and the kicker of all this is it comes in two flavors, and one of them sells for... Oh geez, uh, free ninety three. Low, low, it's it's in the low fives. I think five fifty or something like that. And then the um, so this one's the not longer out yet, cord right? version. It is just it's brand new. It's Fresh just down. released. Yeah, many, we've how actually many amps been is it again? Uh, the great guys at Siemens dropped this off about two months ago, and they actually let us beta test it for them. So we worked through a couple of little things, and um, uh, so we've had it running in the shop yeah. uh, for about two months now. What's your average charge time? Let's say you take your volt when you charge that up. Well, the volts, a, you know, it's got a small pack. Wimpy, wimpy, yeah, wimpy. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so like yeah. the Gia that you just completed. Yeah, the Gia. So the Gia, um, yeah, probably like an eight hour charge time, something like that. It's this. electric, yeah. Full eight hours? Yeah, full eight hours. So you come home, you know, and that's if you're totally empty, and that's on a little yeah. tiny 2500 watt uh, okay. charger. So you come home, you turn it on, you take advantage of the off peak rate. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. The electric company likes you a little bit more because you're easier on the grid, so they say. But we definitely want to show you guys this. Uh, keep an eye out for it. It'll be in the store any day. They shipped our order, so it's due to show up. I, I think it'll be here any day now. Um, this is we we had uh, our intern take this off the wall for us just to be able to show it for the episode. We got to hang it back up so we can uh, charge some cars out there, right? Nice. All right. Uh, we got another. Okay, we're back. We're, we're rookies here. We're kind of filming this on our own, and we had the camera turn off. I guess um, it just got bored. I'm the genius. I think it timed out. <laughs> I think it's censored us. So we're back. It's we censored. had a microphone issue. Can we had you an electrical problem. Yes. In an EV shop. Can In you imagine that? In an EV shop, that? we had an electrical Those problem. Those electrons just will not behave. Right, so I understand we're going to time savers. So we're going to time savers. We were talking about the heater. Um, when we ceramic lost the video, heater. right, where is right. That ceramic so we we have a, a project coming up where we're going to do dual heaters. Uh, in These are about this big, right? Yeah, a little ceramic thing. They weigh a about a pound, thing. pound and Not a half. Not even that, probably. It's right, like a, and it puts out like right. a blow dryer, but it's dead quiet. Right. It's a silent blow dryer. I wouldn't say silent. It doesn't make noise. It's it, the fan uh, that pushes it's air. It's the fan that it's the See, fan that the makes noise. Itself, does it but like what we got what we got over here is uh, this fine young gentleman here has a Ferrari with a Targa top. And um, the vanity in him will not allow him to keep the target top on. So we've got to keep him warm this winter. So we're going to do... Fine young gentleman. I think <laughs> that's what I heard. What a load of beep. Hey, hey one out of three is not bad. That is such uh, a load of And we're going to put a heater in his car because it's the winter. Uh, this is relevant. It's not real warm. Uh, I take that that's back. That's perfect. No, we don't need air conditioning. Right. 
a heater. You just need. You got to keep. Right. The, you got to keep the windows defrosted. Just to, the, you got to keep the leather. Flammable. Right. Yeah. Southern California problems. Yeah. Just you, you know, a little bit of heat in the winter, and we're fine. So we're going to do a heater project. We're going to show that. Um, in the meantime, let's move on. We're going to go to uh, a couple time saver products that we have. Uh, this is the you part of the show. What I want to see right now is the, the the Sony PlayStation you've got right there. We're going to come to that in a little bit. Let's oh, talk about our time savers. Oh, first. we're talking yeah. about electricity. time savers. Electricity. So e e each month we're going to show you a couple products that are super simple. Most people don't even know that they're in our store. Most people don't even talk about them, but they're great time savers. It's something where you can spend 10, 15, 20 bucks and knock an hour or two hours out of your project. So we got a couple of those today. Uh, the first one up is this little bugger. I think you know what that is now. He actually just learned what this thing was about. 10 minutes ago. Take 10. Take 10. <laughs> Somewhere between there. There is, uh, if you're using. So what is that? You use a transmission on a car? Yeah, I got you a transmission. You don't need a starter on an electric car. I don't need a starter. Slap this thing over and adios. There you go. Next step, please. We, we already showed you the flywheel time. without the starter ring. Um, you pull your starter out and you're going to have a big hole it in the side of the too. transmission in the bail housing. It opens beer. It does open beer. And it, you know, close, cl close the hole. Right. Nuts right on. Next project, please. Yeah, and you're using it as a little coffee cup uh, doily. There. That, that, was, that yeah. was very fast. That saved time. Right, perfect. See how fast that was? So our uh, next little time saver, same thing, just a water jet aluminum plate here. Um, this is for your level two J1772 well, this charge is when, inlet. But this is when you take out your filler neck out of right. your car. Right. The idea is to use your gas place you filler put neck. gas. Right. Mm -hmm. well, what other turkey neck on the car or something? <laughs> Seriously? So you put yeah. this. You put, yeah, that's right. You stick. Keep it like that. So I got to stay on my toes with this you guy. Get, you literally get a. Uh, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So you open your gas cap. Right. And you smile at everyone blowing hot exhaust out. You can go pull your car up in front of the. You look whole the other foods. way and plug in yep. backwards. Yep. Wait a second, but check this out. <laughs> this is really we cool. have a live demonstration. Is, no, but that's really cool. Is this thing live? Is, is this, it's plugged in, right? It's plugged so, in. It's got so, uh, current. Ah! Oh, sorry. Just kidding. You know, the great thing about this, a, a lot of guys like uh, Eric over here, that's cool. he might be able to nail this uh, first ring with the hole saw, but then getting the spacing on the, the bolt holes and all that, it, it takes a little uh, uh, practice to get it right. And it's one of those things you could probably do it five times and not get it right every time. Uh, Every time, all Listen, the time. It I works use pencil and paper, Mr. AutoCAD. So, yeah, quick little product here. Neat time Auto saver. Excellent. Right, right. He doesn't tell you. He sits on uh, AutoCAD and, and uh, making very intense drawings. Time savers. Night. Yeah. Yeah. I frankly yeah. drink beer at night. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> how can we get on to the fun should we go, stuff? Should we move on to the PlayStation? Yeah, I want the PlayStation. Did we already do this? Okay. We already did this, right? We got yeah. through that? Yeah, okay. so we're going to move on to the uh, PlayStation, and I think... Uh, I think we filled up our memory card. We have a new so let, let's card? see. So far, uh, you know, this is obviously our first run. We've had uh, the battery die in the microphone. Uh, we had the camera timeout, right? And we had the memory card fill up. So at this something point, something else bad is going to happen. I, I, I don't know. Okay, Trouble just, comes in threes, let's right? Let's start with the PlayStation. Okay. So moving on to the PlayStation controller. This is, uh, you've, what is been, it? you've been dying to talk about this, so I'm just going to let you talk about it. I'm just going to run away with it. But it's a nice uh, aluminum, uh, perfectly molded. It's just perfectly built, light. Uh, to fit in, it's got to be a digital uh, uh, information screen. Absolutely. I mean, talk about the build quality on this. I mean, take a look at it for a it's second. It's aluminum. It's light. Three elect plugs in. It's Anodized it's, blue. I mean, it's just gorgeous. It's got the uh, pre-threaded mounting tabs on it. Just put uh, in your dash, right build your in. dash around it, and it's right. clearly for new builds. I wouldn't want to replace my Volkswagen speedometer and uh, instrument cluster, but on a right. new, I'd put right. this in. Any new right. project. But any that's any incredible. dash that's ready to get molested, that's going to go like just great. And it looks like that. So this is the EVIC, the Electric Vehicle Interface Controller. It's built by a local company here called Andromeda that's doing some really good stuff with some electric vehicle instrumentation. And this would be great in any you know, uh, application where you need to build your own instrumentation solution. Uh, we've got a lot of people doing kit cars, 818s, things like that. Uh, they tell us that it works really well in things like boats, forklifts, basically anything with an electric drivetrain. Um, not the solution I think you're looking for. Totally pro programmable, though. Fully programmable. So is this what um, it looks like, the screen Yeah, you know, like? the, the great thing about this, it's CAN bus controlled, and uh, they've got uh, some firmware files that are, they'll drop right in. It works, uh, works in conjunction with the Elcon chargers that we sell. Uh, it also will plug right into the Curtis 1238 and 1239 controllers and pull data off the CAN bus. So right out of the package, you're going to be able to read your current, your... Um, uh, yeah. 
<laughs> your voltage, et cetera, et cetera. That's all charge, it says. The picture's worth RPM. a thousand words over here, a thousand words. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. You see right here when the line gets all the way up there, it says time to get out and walk. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous display. And you know, the neat thing about Andromeda, um, they're a great company and they'll work on custom solutions. That's so cool. motor temperature, if you have a small fleet vehicle awesome. or you want to do a custom graphics package, they're working on a little EV West package for us. Um, uh, it's kind of neat. You can customize awesome. it. So when it fires yeah. up, you get the EV West. Right. All right. So right. what's the opposite? No compromise. Of that? So that. the opposite of that is obviously lots of needles and analog gauges, like you have in your Ferrari, and um, Volkswagen, and Volkswagen, the Wicker Basket Express. Right. Right. All right. Uh, let's see it. Bring the it Jolly out. Project. We got a Jolly. lot of a lot of older cars here with some needles in them, and uh, and this all, is the that's solution about every for that. Project you have up your sleeve right now. Right. All right. It's beautiful construction again. It's solid, right? So and this the, is the aluminum again. Yeah, this the is green. the uh, the auto block amp. It's made by a company called Recharge Car. Uh, these guys make some really, really. I mean, look at the fit and finish on this thing. But it's so it converts, absolute professional it converts uh, in order to run your analog gauges. Yes. Yeah. So instead what, of using that, you can keep your gauges. Right. Now this is going to drive two gauges for you. It's basically going to keep track of your state of charge. So it's going to camp, count your amp hours and let you know when your battery pack is full or needs, time needs to, to charge. Time to walk. Uh, and it's also <laughs> going to uh, basically pull your current and um, convert that into a series of pulses that will run on any tachometer. So you can use an analog tachometer to show what kind of current your uh, yeah. motor's trying. You read the schematic? You are. Zero. Look at that. I yeah. can read. You can read. It's not even in Spanish. It's not even in Spanish. It's got a USB port. Um, these guys have a great software package. They've really improved. They've got a Macintosh and a PC solution it's for it. Tell me it's going to fire. Man. <laughs> yeah. And um, we're going to do something with that in a future video. We're going to hook it up on um, Perfect. some of your little Ferrari gauges. I don't know yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. I yeah, but it's, it's real slick, so we got to highlight it. We can't do it justice just by talking about it here. Both of these things, both of these uh, instrumentation we'll solutions okay. need to be shown off a little bit more. Um, so what do we have next? We got these little guys. I see something over there. You see something over here. This is here. like Santa Claus's <laughs> factory. I mean, this is just like the boring stuff, but it's awesome stuff. Yeah, I really hope we're not being Electronic too switches. That's electronic switch. Yeah. Maybe not. But Call these are both the same switch. thing. I don't think they would really no, know what you're talking about. I don't know. What's, you, what's you the word? It. What's the word? I don't know. Okay. That is the Mini Tactor See, by I uh, I Gigavac know and uh, Alev 100. They're both contactors. They're both uh, lower amperage contactors than we use on the, on the traction pack and the battery for uh, you know, the motor and the controller system. But you would use these on things like the heater that we're going to put in your Ferrari. Uh, be able to electronically oh, turn on and off the See, heater, I right? I forget things right. like an old guy. Right. So you have a 12 volt switch that triggers something that's running on higher voltage, and it's a uh, insulation between the two electrical systems. I couldn't put it better myself. Uh, the Gigavac version is great. It's this a 50 one? 50 amp unit. Uh, it, you, can, you can run up to 1200 volts on that little. Okay, little but that right is there. nice construction. It's light. It's gorgeous. It's yeah. solid. Yep. It's it's sealed. It's like a, what is that material? Uh, I think that's like a UHMW case, like, something like yeah, that. It's yeah, like it's really nice. It's very, I mean, you, you know, a lot of the stuff doesn't come across in the camera, of course, but the Gigavac stuff, you know, it, it should be noted that Gigavac is just a truly wonderful company. They're up in Santa Barbara, so they're kind of local product. to us in, in San Diego, uh, California coastline guys. And they have taken a real interest in electric vehicles <laughs> and they they want to provide products and solutions that really go. help us oh, out you know and uh, they're real open to you know getting ideas for for new products and ways that they can kind of help the the whole thing it's always thinking about little things in cars that you don't have to think about so you don't have to think yeah. about them when you do them right and uh, this is the previous solution this is the lev 100 it's a 100 amp version of the same thing um, really nice it's like the mini me contactor it looks just like an ev 200 or a gv 200 contactor but in a smaller form factor you can fit it in uh, tighter places and and you know like i said your heater your air conditioner your vacuum pump anything like that you're going to run off of these guys Awesome, that's our time savers. Yeah, yeah, so we're really excited with this one. It's brand new, they just released it, so we thought we'd show it off. You know, I did a search on Google uh, shopping earlier and that thing doesn't even show up. That's how new it is. Um, it's just like maybe one or two stores. You're just saying you're dialed in. He's uh, modest, he's dialed Well, in. you know, uh, it is on our website at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's about that's it modesty. for uh, a lot of the products that we talked about. We talked about our time savers. How much time, uh, did, we time, time did we spend talking about time saving? <laughs> Oh, shit, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, well, just you know, someone's got to keep uh, an eye on the needle. <laughs> is it time to hatch the triplets?
How about the mail truck? Um, well, that's up to you. We can talk Let's about the talk triplets about the next. mail truck first. Let's talk, talk about, about the, the US truck? mail. Okay. We're going to take a quick break to move some stuff around real quick, and we're going to talk about a future upcoming project we have. The guy with two left thumbs over here. Wait. All right, so uh, we wheeled in um, our dual AC76 project over here. Hutch was, he was, he was playing with his gas pedal with, while we were at break. Oh, sorry. Uh, he was uh, a little disappointed we were going to put a plastic pedal in his car. And, uh, you know, it's, it's worth mentioning that you can cover that in billet aluminum, so you're okay. It is light. It is light. And I know I've, I've disagreed with you on some things before. Right. But somehow you always win. I'm not sure when I'm going to win, but something I'm going to This will be a compromise. We'll cover it in billet aluminum, and we'll both be happy. Okay, I'm okay with yeah. that. Yeah. So um, this looks like one hell of a strong blender. Yeah, right? I mean, <laughs> mar oh, this weighs about margarita three, time. 300 pounds? Uh, something like that. Yeah, I think a little over 300. It's I'll a twin, it in a uh, twin AC75. Um, we're going to run it on dual Curtis 1239 controllers. And this is for a little project that we got going on. We can't disclose too much about it because uh, we got uh, other plans. So we'll for stop it. delivering yeah. the mail? But something like that. Okay. Send it, right? Okay. Uh, we just wanted to kind of show you the construction along the way. Uh, Matt just made these together the other day. Uh, did a little tutorial video. We're going to show that a little bit later. So that's these and, two uh, custom brackets you guys did right, here. Right. And you, I saw that you put in a knuckle in the middle that locks the two motors yep. with a, a, couple with them a rubber, uh -huh. with a rubber type of hard plastic gasket to keep any vibration out and right. to keep the uh, tension perfect. Right. I saw that. Yeah. You, you, you were paying you attention. You were paying attention, did you? You were paying attention. Yeah. Uh, and the great thing about this is, is uh, like a lot of our bolt-in kits, it goes straight into the factory motor mount so this is actually a factory jeep motor mount right there yeah, it just drops right a in. factory what i didn't understand jeep oh, jeep, jeep. jeep yeah okay. oh. we can say it's a jeep oh, okay yeah we can say it's a jeep okay. yeah all right so uh keep an eye out for this and uh should we move on to the i yeah. mean we, we went from the twins so but it's worth noting that uh, it, it, the color of the motors is always standard correct yes and it denotes what because of the color well, I think most people associate the blue with uh, high-performance electric vehicle systems, but HPVS. Isn't there, yeah, isn't there like the, uh, if it's an AC or a DC motor, aren't there people who associate well, colors with yeah, it too? Yeah, typically, typically. Because I've heard people yeah. asking on the different color if it's I've an AC or DC. Yeah, I've seen we, these questions. Yeah, we had a recent episode where we put some pictures of some red things online and people assumed that they were... Uh, Hot. Yes. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it is okay. what it is. They assume, that, you know, NetGain has been making red motors right. for years, right? And I think a lot of people just assumed that it was a NetGain motor, and um, it, it wasn't. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, it was an AC solution. All so right, let's look at the... Uh, so we move on to the triplets. Okay, we're going to take another quick break and wheel some stuff around, and uh, we'll bring you the tri uh, triplets. Okay. Uh, this is a classic here. This was something that... I mean, can, can we just get a, back get a moment a of silence? Do you want I mean, to, should we just be quiet? You know, you, you know why you have three... You I'm know? at a loss for words. I, I really am. These are uh, in our short time doing Do you know this. why you have triplets and what happens when you have them? Well, what's better than two? Three, but you keep them together. It's a family. Right. They're right. going to stay together for the rest right. of their life inside of only one vehicle that's suitable to the custom color that uh, HP EVS put on. Right. Right. So, you know, we like to make affordable projects for people. And the toughest thing is getting a lot of power in a car. And a lot of times, the cost just goes up right away. A 200 kilowatt controller, 150 kilowatt controller. These are tough numbers to make economically. So this is something you can do that's really powerful, but still keeps a really reasonable budget. Right. Very budget-minded. A lot of power. We're going to be uh, at about 216 kilowatts with this setup. So we're going to have a the lot AC of power. The AC-51s, right? Yes, AC-51s. And they're a little 51s. different than the AC-50s, I've been correcting. A little correcting. different. A little higher revving. Yeah, a little See, bit more in horsepower. Turns in turn needs to be disciplined. Um, and, you know, the torque, I think we're going to be uh, 340 foot-pounds of torque, somewhere around there. I heard something um, with these three at 400 from I think the manufacturer you have a, when I was there. And, and your G50, I, I did the math earlier. It was a 3.5 first gear with a 333 rear end. We're going to have... What was it, 3,800 foot-pounds of torque at the axle? Something yeah, like that? Yeah, I think that was your estimates. And I was talking to uh, the guys up at HPVES. I went up to meet them, picked these up yep. in person because I'm very yep. uh, 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 gracious for their efforts that they put into uh, custom polishing the aluminum on these and powder coating them, yeah. which is not on the menu. I think they're... Uh they might be a little afraid that they're going to start getting orders for these things. So don't, don't call them and ask oh. for... Don't. 
<laughs> well, okay, so here's what he was saying. So let, let's throw a graphic up on the screen real quick just to show him what we're doing with these. So now you can see we have the triple motor set up. You can see uh, this was the a end v covers. This was a V format yep. to complement the Ferrari, but in order to get the V format, and we can't use the Ferrari transaxle, which is uh, in the car, so that's what Right, the, the, the original Ferrari transaxle is cast into the engine box sump. It so is. Uh, it absolutely is. there's no, you know, you cannot unsiamese those Siamese twins. No. It's just not happening. So so uh, we went with a real popular solution for a lot of the kit car guys. You see these in like the GT40 kit cars and most mid-engine V8 LS kind of solution kit cars. Uh, you take a Porsche 911 turbo uh, transaxle, also known as the G50. I mean, this thing's just very stout. Um, so we can talk about the G50 a little bit. We're flipping it over, running it in a reverse configuration. What's well, going to be faster? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're doing a cable shifter. We converted the long nose to the short well, nose. We'll we should probably do a little product thing on that later on. We'll save that for later. But right? We just wanted to point out three gorgeous motors. Yeah, fresh uh, arrivals. Yeah. Fresh arrivals that are immediately being engineered into uh, a project. Yeah, and these are in gorgeous Ferrari red. Uh, should we? Take a walk later and maybe show them the Ferrari. Maybe. We'll, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll go mobile here in a little bit and take a look at the Ferrari. You know, we wanted to talk about some of the cars that we have in the shop right now. Uh, I feel like this is, the show's going a little long. I mean, even the shop dog keeps barking now. <laughs> He's saying, <laughs> wrap it up, guys. So um, some of the cars that, that we have coming up here in our shop, we've got a 69 Carmen Ghia. i um, been driving that around. Of course, having a lot of fun in yep. that. Um, we've got our 1978 right-hand drive postal Jeep uh, that we're converting. Um, we got some fun stuff planned for that. Boxster. Yeah, we got the 99 Boxster next door with an 11-inch motor. That thing's going to be a I heard a Matt's real putting ripper. a new transmission in the BMW. Right, right. The, Soon. Uh, well, we're just servicing it. He, servicing it. Yeah, he. Uh, we were out of town the other weekend, and Matt, uh, cats away, mice will play. Matt went out drag racing at Barona. Oh. And yes, yes. That's the story. Yes, yes that is the story. Yeah. Matt, get it working, um, bro. Hang on. Uh, <laughs> Hang on. Yeah. That's you know who yeah. that is. That's Brando. I'm I'm embarrassed to say that uh, this gentleman over here has the Magnum PI sound theme song. It's your ringtone. Oh man, it uh, it just never ends with you. Hi, Brando. It? You're live on our television show here. <laughs> I got Mike Bream here, and, and we're uh, we're at the uh, EV YouTube channel. Well, since my partner has no cooth here, we're going to go ahead and cut. We're going to walk over and take a look at the Ferrari now. We'll What's see happening, Brando? <laughs> hey. Uh... <laughs> okay, so uh, we're in Bay Two over here, and. Uh, Day two of filming, you said? <laughs> yeah, it feels like it, huh? <laughs> uh, we're just going to wrap up our show. I uh, want to show them your little project here we got. Well, that's your project, I'll too. Let, I'll let you talk about it. What do we got right here? Uh, 1978 308 GTS of the GT series. There was like 12,000 made, 3,500 plus or minus of the GTS. Yeah. Well, we bought it off of uh, Copart with a salvage title because it had a fuel fire. Fire Ari. The fire Ari. The trunk burned, the engine burned. <laughs> The timing belt uh, was burned off, so we didn't know what the engine yeah. condition is. Turns out, everything's fine. It worked. A little age on it, but everything is in great condition. Yeah. Parts of uh, we've gotten rid of parts to help other Ferraris stay on the road. Sent stuff to probably a dozen countries and a dozen states in, three, in 90 days. Yeah. And uh, we're just basically trading parts for uh, electrical components. Yeah. So he's so. keeping the Ferrari community happy, putting the parts back into the community of the ones that were taken out, not and using. We're going them. ground up on the build all the way down to repacking all four hubs. Right. They've taken everything off, powder coated, new wheels, tires, rims, suspension. Uh, Coil interior, overs, everything, paint, right. uh, top to bottom, and this is starting next week, and we're excited to start putting the information together on Ferrari right. Chat, right. Uh, Electric Ferrari on Instagram, that's it, where to find right. it. Right, Electric Ferrari on Instagram. Yep. Yep. And that'll also link into EV West, uh, the Facebook, and then we'll have more shows on this in the future. Yeah, and, and you know, we'll keep you updated uh, the next couple monthly shows, you know, we'll show progress on this. We'll probably have it up and running, what, a couple months maybe, something if like you, that. Maybe if you can um, get on time, maybe you can we'll show smart, to the yeah, same. Right. Car show. show some more detail. I mean, what a great car, right? It's tube frame construction, uh, perfect for what we're it's doing. It's made yeah. for being an electric car. Yeah. We're taking this beyond just a standard fry. We're tightening up the suspension, the brakes, almost like racing brakes with geo discs. Yeah, geo uh, discs, great guys. Uh, we are going the distance. This yeah. car is going to be basically look like a street car, but you could put it on the track, but not a complete race car. <laughs> if you can't do a peel out, get an electric car. Yeah, right. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Enjoy your time. So, um, 
You're always premature with the wrap up, aren't oh, you? Oh, I'm not. I'm yeah. just saying love you. Okay. Well, love my car. Uh, again, thanks for watching. This is just our monthly update show um, here at EV West, the EV show. And uh, stay with us. What's we'll have another email? show. Uh, our, our email for the show is evshow at evwest.com. And send us a question if you have any questions, if you want something to, you know, to cover, suggestions. I mean, we could probably use a few of those for sure. Questions. Questions. Answers. Don't if you have answers to the questions, go ahead and send them. Big, yeah. long list of right. suggestions. Yeah. But I think that's it. Uh, thanks for being with us. You know, thanks for joining us. Absolutely appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you next time uh, with EV West on The EV Show. I'm Michael Bream. This is my co-host, Eric Hutchison. Yeah, we'll see you soon. Have a great weekend. Love you.